Hello, Team Akea. To continue the conversation that we started about two weeks ago on customer management. Like we said, the customer is the live wire of your organization. And in case you missed it, I encourage you to please go back and watch. There has been two videos already on this and what did the videos cover? The first one covered the value proposition, how you need to ensure you keep your eye on it, keep your eye on the customer. The second video covered making it a relationship, not a transaction, as well as ensuring that you build an emotional connection with your customers. Now, let's quickly take the last two this week so that next week we could possibly move on to something brand new. And what are the last two points you need to remember when it comes to your customer? Number four then will be when there are issues, how do you deal? No matter how hard you try, it is not unimaginable that there will be service failures, there will be product failures, there will be broken promises, unable to meet the demand, unable to fulfill commitment when they happen. What do you do? The first thing you need to note about this is that if you've done the first three things we've said properly, if you focused on your value offerings, if you try to make it a relationship and not a transaction, if you have also built an emotional connection with your customers, when there are failures or service disruptions, you are likely going to get a second chance, a third chance, an end chance, but you do not have an indefinite chance. So when there is a failure, when there are issues, you need to move quickly, you need to move deliberately to get them solved. Don't sit on your bum. Don't make promises you are not able to keep. Don't compound the problem by turning the customer around. And remember, this is why we keep talking about process, process, process. It has been proven that over 80% of service failure, product failure are process driven and only 2010 of that is related to people or people driven. So when you have disruptions or service breakdown, you need to quickly find a way to fix it. The more important the customer, the higher the speed. And what you are doing it's more than just trying to fix the service breakdown. You are also trying to learn. You are trying to find out how you can prevent it. And you are doing everything to assuage the customer. Service disruption can actually become a, an opportunity for you to have a fan. To acquire a fan. To get a customer that will go across the world and sing your song. So don't see service breakdown as necessarily the end of the world, a bad thing. As long as you can rise quickly, deal with it and fix it. And one thing you will find out that is very critical in fixing service disruption is that you begin to see clearly the value of the internal customer. Yes, there are two types of customers. You got the internal customers and you got the external customers. Note it for a fact today. Unless the internal customer is happy, the external customer can never be happy. So when there are service disruptions, you need to ensure that all the internal customers rise up, work together to make the external customers happy. If you, if you move fast, if you move quickly, if you move compassionately, if you move with a lot of empathy and you do what you can to remedy the situation as best as you can, what looks like a bad scenario may actually become one of your best moments with your customers that they will go all out to spread the, word, the good news about how responsive you are and how sensitive you are. And don't ever forget, 
the best form of mark the best form of marketing is the word of mouth marketing so whatever you do do your best to resolve issues as quickly as they rise and the last but not the least in the list of five that i've tried to share is the fact that in all this journey you are taking whether it has to do with your service offering whether it has to do with making it a relationship, whether it has to do with building emotional connection, whether it has to do with resolving issues as they arise, is this issue of knowledge management. You need to be deliberate in building a knowledge management system. As it has already become apparent in our world today, technology has become a commodity. There's no technology company A has that company B cannot have as long as it's got its money in its pocket. But one thing that is very difficult to just copy and paste, to just borrow and buy, is this issue of knowledge management and this issue of building traction in the market and having goodwill in the market. Imagine a customer calls you the first time and all the details are captured. And you've got a customer relationship management system that helps you to know who they are, what numbers they are calling you from. Maybe they did not even buy from you in that interaction. And then the next time they are calling, as the agent is speaking the call, as the key account manager is speaking the call, what he's saying is, hello, Mr. T. Mark, good day, what can I do for you? Do you know how powerful it is? It just completely disarms the customer. It helps the customer to know that he or she is not just a number. He or she is not just a transaction that you value the relationship. But you can't do any of this unless you are managing knowledge. Have you ever wondered what make a hotel? Five star, four star, three star. At the center of this, is knowledge management. A five-star hotel is deliberate to build a profile for the customer. How does he like his pillows? Are they many? Are they few? Are they soft? Are they hard? Is he a non-smoking guest? Is he a smoking guest? What kind of meals? Does he like to be woken up in the morning? They are deliberate to turn every inquiry, every service point to a knowledge creation exercise. And so they go through the entire gamut of knowledge creation, knowledge documentation, knowledge storage, knowledge retrieval, knowledge disposal. They know everything about this customer such that it does not even matter who the service agent is at the desk when the guest comes in. The repository is there. They deal with that customer as if it's exactly the same person that has been serving him or her every single time. That is what you need to try to build. You don't have to invest in expensive technology. The first thing you need is that orientation, that mindset, where you help, where you encourage your people to be deliberate, to capture as much as they can. And where you can afford it, it doesn't have to be the top range of those technology. Find a basic CRM. Let your customer know that they are not just a number that they really count and you are taking note of how you are interacting with them and you are turning that knowledge into service delivery. You will be shocked as to how powerful these few tips are and how much difference they make in not just keeping your current clientele or customer base, but turning them into fans that will go out into the world and they will mouth you they will spread the news, they will paint you, they will position you as a premium brand. Those things are invaluable. One last thing before I go. What will happen to you if you do not look after your customers? Research has shown that it is five to six times more expensive to serve a new customer compared to your existing customer. Meaning that by just being careless with your customers, you are directly eroding your bottom line. I'm sure you do not want to do that. So, as an entrepreneur, as you go on, please don't ever forget 
Looking after your customer is a primary duty. You need to worry about it. You need to run after it. You need to ensure that you do it well. And let me just do a quick recap. Number one is that focus on the value offering that you are doing. Number two is that make it a relationship. Number three is that have emotional connection with them. Number four, resolve their issue with speed and dispatch. And number five, build a knowledge management system that turns everything into a weapon that makes you that makes it possible for you to delight your customer. Mm, thanks for being here once again this week. That will end it for me on this series in which we have been focusing on customer management. I really do hope you found one or two things relevant and useful in what we've shared. If there's still something you need clarifications on, draw us up an email, drop us a message on the Telegram channel, drop us a message on YouTube. Anyhow, you know how to reach us. Please reach out. We are here waiting and willing and looking forward to serving you. And until I come your way next week with a new video focusing on something different, I will like you to please remember to share this as widely as you can because that is one way that encourages us and gives us the energy to keep going. So, until next time on this channel, don't ever forget that Tim Mark is still my name and all I've tried to do is what? Make a little difference. Thanks for being here this week and see you next time. Bye!